All right, everyone, welcome back into another fantasy golf video. Going to be breaking down underdogs, best ball drafts for the majors only. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I went ahead and made a cheat sheet for this like I did for underdogs regular season best ball drafts that they had going. And so it's going to operate the exact same way as it operated for uh, with the season long. The only difference is going to be that we only have four tournaments going to this, obviously, because it's going to be the majors only. And so looking at the rules, it's going to be basically the exact same thing, except for round one, it's going to be six persons. Two players are still going to make it out of that. But again, it's only going to be one tournament for those rounds. That's the biggest difference. And so really the biggest differentiation point, I think, is going to be concentrating on round one and round two. Naturally, if those players do well, and let's say maybe they aren't qualified for those other majors, well, naturally, if they do well in the first two majors, chances are they're going to be playing in the the other two majors as well but for the most part i do think we want to be targeting these guys in the masters and the P the pga championship as well so the roster makeup if anyone's confused is going to be four bench and then six golfers so again with it being the majors i do think we are going to be able to accurately be able to get at least six golfers in every single tournament because again it's only four tournaments whereas with the regular season it was a little bit more difficult to do so so with that being said i did go ahead and make a cheat sheet for this as well now i do want to call it that on this cheat sheet the live golfers are not going to be popping up as much someone on twitter asked about Brooks kepka specifically and i think that's a great question so the data that i have going into this is basically the pga tour data is going into this over the past like seven eight years now the most recent data that we have to you know give a model breakdown and that's what i should point out to you guys is that for each tournament i went ahead and did a model breakdown for them looking at course history current recent form looking at their stat fit for said tournament and then i use the night the odds that we currently have as well and i put a rank on that and then we have projected starts for all these golfers so that's how we're coming up with these projected fantasy points okay so someone like Bruce kepka though where his last few starts on the pga tour were good starts because they're majors the starts before that were kind of bad so he is someone where you know adp wise and i actually have a draft going right now let's see he's fifth because scotty was already drafted uh, i'd be fine with that so yeah i'm at pick two right now in this draft that i'm doing brooks is fifth after that it's kind of a toss-up um but i do want to call that out to you guys so the way the way i think we could go about really using this tool in an effective way is really just look at those first two tournaments it's gonna be the masters and the pga championship so any golfer that's gonna get two starts in that I feel pretty good about okay so you can actually see victor hovland is graying out pretty well uh, i think he's just slight, slightly better than uh rom and scotty maybe in the pga championship i'm not exactly sure but um well they're all tied those three are tied so it really doesn't matter in terms of that but this to me is where we are going to get our best value by doing it this way now we want to make sure let's say for example let's say we want to draft sam burns okay We're, we want to draft sam burns let's just you see he's a good round one and round two pick for that you know to get us out of round one and round two let's just make sure though however that he is going to have those other ones let's just see does he have four stars total he does okay so that is kind of how i would go about doing this but i try to make this as simple and straightforward as the regular season tool and for what's worth the regular season tool right now my drafts are advancing about 60 percent of them which i think is a very good rate uh but want to call this out to you guys as well if you guys are using this tool there's this little uh metric slider right here you can click that and then if you just want to target golfers that have four total starts projected just do that all the way over okay and that's just going to be taking in all the golfers that have odds for all four events currently okay basically they qualified for all those events and so that's the way we go about doing this so so the way i like to go about doing this guys is i like to go through and kind of set my cue based off of the nine to five ranks and like we don't have to completely agree with them like that is perfectly fine that is just going to be something that we use to gauge uh a good draft and so right now uh we have sky Scheffler going first then rom Rory's probably going to go next. I actually have pick four here. And so for pick four, I'd be perfectly happy to go Xander at pick four based off of that. But we're going to see that we are going to get, you know, a lot of potentially mispriced golfers compared to their ADP. Like in comparison, I have Terrell Hatton a lot higher than the field does, which is fine. But let's say maybe for my next pick, Hatton is available but also i don't know let's say justin thomas is available i'd be fine going justin thomas there like there is a kind of i'm okay with taking the adp and then hopefully still getting had in the next pick just as an fy and that's gonna be the same thing for someone like sam burns who's really popping up data wise like we have to scroll a little bit to get to sam burns we could do that with russell henley as well who's really kind of someone that's popping up data wise um you know he's going pick 32 so like maybe 
if there's some egregiously mispriced or not, I shouldn't even say that it's, it's more for these live golfers like Bryce and Dustin, like if they're still there, I'd be fine kind of taking a peek on them. Again, the live golfers are not going to be popping up in there as much, but I like to use it as a tool, just like any sort of rankings when you're doing drafts. So Coming up, I'm going to have the next pick here. Uh, so the draft has went Scotty, Rom, Rory, Xander, Hovland, Brooks, Morikawa. And I'm hoping to get Patrick Hanley next, but I'd be perfectly fine to get Ober next as well. Both of those are going to be good plays. And I will say Cam Smith, I'd be fine with in pick two as well. A lot of people are not getting to him as well. I will say I get so sick of people uh, auto drafting golfers in this, but uh, Ober is going to be my play or my pick. So it's when Scotty, Rom, Rory, Xander, Hovland, Brooks, Morikawa, Cantley, Ober, was, which was my pick. So that's why I like go about doing it. And so I'm going to keep this up. I'm going to just show you guys my draft pick. And so this is the tricky part because obviously a lot of those majors are going to be a little bit down the road here. Um, I got Haddon ranked as the next best golfer. Then we have to go a little bit for Wyndham Clark. There's kind of a big gap here. Matt Fitzpatrick is currently playing well. I think there's a chance I could get Haddon and Matt Fitzpatrick. I'd be kind of okay with that. I kind of want to go Fitzpatrick here. I'm going to do that. But at the, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead. But like, that's where I'd be okay. Maybe making a slight adjustment according to the rankings. All right. So here we go. After that pick, it was Fitzpatrick, DJ, Young, Sanjay, M. And now I'm kind of left with another conundrum here. So the data like Sam Burns next, I don't mind Wyndham Clark as well. I will go with Sam Burns here because the data tells me to do so. But this is where, you know, if you want to make a slight difference, maybe try to get lucky to get Sam Burns instead later. I'd be fine with that. But so far, my draft is Xander. Aubert, Hatton, and Sam Byrne. All right, so here's my next pick here. I uh, just showing you guys the draft board. Went Bryson, Clark, Finau, Hideki, Minwoo Lee, Tagala. I would say there's a lot of good value there in uh, round five in general. I'm perfectly fine going Tom Kim here. That feels like a very safe play. And then really after that is when we're going to start to really get unique. And so here's where it really starts to get interesting here. Deeper on in the draft. So I'm going to go Brian Harmon here because he is really popping up. Uh, we are gaining some value here. Could go Corey Connors as well. Uh, but I'm going to go Harmon. I feel most comfortable about him. And I probably will want to go Corey Connors next to the most. I'm trying to save Harris English for later on in the draft. Same thing with JT Poston because I feel pretty good about those two just later on in the draft. And just while we're talking about this, this is probably something I will refine a little bit more as the weeks progress, as the days progress. Probably factor in a little bit of made cut equity. That, that could certainly change some things, okay? But this is currently just going off of how they're projected to play for that upcoming major and then whether and also their odds and then also whether or not they have odds for the said tournament. That's what's going into this right now. And so a big decision time here. I kind of thought I was going to go Corey Connors here. I feel really good about either of them. I'm going to go with the data though and go JT Post. And I'm really hoping that no one wants to get to Harris English next though. That way I feel like we are, we are getting, setting ourselves up for a lot of success. All right. So for the next picture, you guys can see it went Connors, Kirk, Siwoo, Benny Ann, you know, kind of okay with that. I'm going to go Harris English here. The, the kind of risk paid off for me here. I was able to get him three rounds later than what the data was telling us to do. So feel pretty good about that. But that's that's the slight edges that we get here. That's the difference. Like for example, Ricky Fowler has been a very big benefit for me in the regular seasons to most likely advance out of round one. And then guys, here, real quickly, I'm up in one pick. This is where it gets ugly. I'm probably gonna have to go Patrick Reed here and I don't want to. Like that is extremely ugly. This is where it starts to get very unique. And so my team so far, got one pick left. We got Xander, Aubert, Hatton, Sam Burns, Tom Kim, Brian Harmon, JT Poston, Harris English, and Patrick Reed. Now, what will be key to close out this last pick is really getting someone that will get four start. And that's where it starts to get thin. And like, I, I know I won't get Kirk Kitayama, but that's, that would be huge. That's literally difference here. He, he should go next. And he did. And so right now it's, it's very tough. Uh, I don't mind going Usti. I do expect him to play well in the majors. I'm probably going to go him. Um, at the same time, I don't mind that idea of Bo Hosler. He's been playing pretty well thus far this season. He should be able to qualify for, you know, a lot of majors, but Usti's currently the safest. So it kind of is what it is. But that's going to be all guys. If you're interested in using that tool, it is available for nine to five members. That's going to be included in your nine to five membership. Uh, just go over to the golf tab, click on underdog best ball draft, and you'll, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, it's $10 a month. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.